Transitions are something that can take your stream from super basic, boring to look at, to incredibly aesthetic and beautiful movements in just one plugin or a few settings. And it's important, you know, if you use the default settings for what transitions on OBS Studio, you're gonna get some fades, it's gonna look kind of okay, but really you want to be having some decent movement. Uh, you can start by using Stinger transitions, your own WebM's tra uh, transparent transitions, which look really nice, but using the Move Transition plugin, you can take this to a whole new level. The Move Transition allows you to move sources visually as you transition from scene to scene on OBS Studio. If a scene has the same source in two different locations, instead of it fading out and then fading in, it will actually move across into its new position. A little bit tricky to explain without actually showing you. So let's get into the plugin a little bit. So here is the plugin. It's Move Transition 2.5.3 at the moment. It might be a different build number when you come to get it. Um, but you install it just like you do with any other plugin. In fact, this one also has a Windows installer. So go ahead and uh, unzip that zip file and use the Windows installer to install the plugin. Once you have the plugin installed, let's get rid of that. Actually, no, let's leave the video capture device there. For now, I'm going to need two scenes with the same source in them. So I've got scene three here with my webcam, and I've got scene four here with my webcam in the bottom right, and scene two with my webcam over this weird blue and pink counter -y thingy. What I want to do is I want to add the move transition so that when I slip, when I uh, go from scene three to scene four, it doesn't cut like that or it doesn't fade when I set the transition to fade. It doesn't fade in. I actually want it to move. So when I click scene four, I want this to physically move into the bottom right hand corner. And this is what this plugin is going to do for us. So if I go to my transitions in the bottom right hand corner, after I've added or after you've added the new plugin, there will be this move option here. So we're gonna to go to add move and we're gonna go for move. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this move uh, tutorial so that I know that this is the transition that we're working on. I'm gonna press okay and a new menu is gonna come up. We're just gonna ignore that for a second and press okay. You see down here in the scene transitions doc, it now says move tutorial. And with the default settings, just the default settings, take a look at this. When I click scene four, the video capture device just moves, it slides into place. And if I click scene three, it slides back. Scene four and scene three. Now that's pretty cool, right? It's already looking absolutely fly. When I click on scene two, the webcam moves into place and all of the other aspects come onto screen. And when I click on scene three, all the aspects go off the screen except for the webcam which zoomed into place. Pretty nice. Now let's take a look at the settings. We're gonna go to the scene transitions dock, click on this little button, this little cog down here, this little gear, and it's going to pop up with a menu that says properties. You're gonna click properties. And there we have it, the transition settings. Now, this is pretty simple to understand. What we need to do is tell the settings on the transitions exactly what we want them to do when there is a matching source and when there isn't a matching source. So at the moment, let's just cancel this. We're looking at scene three and scene four. So in scene three, we have the video capture device and in scene four, we have the same sourced video capture device. Let's go to the settings again. And what we want to do, when there is matched items, then this is going to happen. This box here, all of these things are gonna happen when there's matched items. So we do have matched items here. So these matched items are going to ease in and out. We can turn off easing, easing function, leave this on cubic, you don't really need much more. The transition, we can add a fade or a cut as well. I wouldn't suggest it. Uh, and the curve will choose how fast it goes in and how fast it goes out. To be honest, I'd just be leaving these alone. These don't really matter. What does matter at the top here is match if the source name contains the other source name with numbers removed from n matches the other source name and with the last. So what this is looking at is if you have video capture device and video capture device two, at the moment they are not connected in this move transition. However, 
If I click with numbers removed from end matches the other source name. So if I have video capture device two, this will now be associated with video capture device. So they will move in transition with each other. Does that make sense? Also with the last word removed and contains the other source name, you can add these if you wish. Now, at the moment, we've got a very, very nice move between the two sources. But if I add, let's say I add a text source to this page, and I'm just going to call it uh, raw, like a lion. I'm going to put a raw there, just uh, at the bottom of this webcam. If I now switch to scene four, there is no text source that says raw in scene number four. So what's going to happen to that text? It's going to go out to the right. And when I click scene three, it's going to come in from the left. Now, why did it do that? And how do we change that? Well, you go to, let me just turn off my video capture device so you can see this. You go to settings again in the scene transitions dock down here and properties. And what we want to do is we want to look for appearing items and disappearing items. So these are items that didn't exist before in the scene, but are appearing and items that did exist before in the scene, but are disappearing. So, appearing items. We want appearing items to come from, let's say we want them to come from the top of the screen. Let's do that. And disappearing items, we want them to go to the bottom of the screen. So when they disappear, they're going to go to the bottom of the screen. And let's click OK. So, in theory, when I click Scene 4 now, Raw is going to go to the bottom of the screen and disappear. There it goes. Now, when I click scene three, it's going to appear and it's going to appear from the top of the screen. There it comes. So it's super, super simple to decide where and when those things go when they don't exist in the next scene. Now, if they do exist in the next scene, they will just move. So let me copy that text source and go to scene four and paste it in the top right hand corner because it now exists in both scenes. It doesn't appear or disappear, it just moves. So if I click on scene three, it will move into position. And I click on scene four, and it will move into the position. Because it's recognizing that it's in both scenes and that it should move instead of appear or disappear. Pretty cool, right? One other thing I should add, if I remove the text from scene four and we have the appearing from the top and disappearing to the bottom again, if I go to the transition settings, you can choose whether or not that zooms in and out during that transition. So I'm going to turn zoom off and it will be the same size as it goes to the top and when it goes to the bottom. Take a look. So it will just go to the bottom and it will just come from the top. There's no zoom there. But if I turn on the zoom, it will go from small to big and big to small, which I think is a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. I think it looks a little bit better. Let's have a look. So you see it makes it smaller and it makes it bigger. So it's just appearing out of nowhere, which I kind of like. And that, my friends, is the move transition. Now, at the moment, it's set to move transition down here. So it will happen on every single scene you have. You're going to need an additional plugin like the transition matrix plugin to be able to choose which scenes use the move uh, transition and which scenes use stingers or standard transitions. You're going to need that additional plugin because at the moment, every single scene is going to use the move transition. But it does look cool. Remember, if you have matching sources in two different scenes, they will move. If they are not matching, they will disappear or appear. Be sure to get those settings correct and you can make this transition look extremely professional.